Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at a, an interesting and unusual Pentax telescope. It's a 65 millimeter. The Pentax 65 has a focal length of 700 millimeters. That's a kind of an unusual combination. Uh, it's about an F11 or so, so it's a little short, a little fast. And that focal ratio is actually one of the advantages of the scope. It makes the scope very compact, has pretty decent aperture, um, and yet it is easy to manage. And a 60 millimeter, 65 millimeter at f11 is really good. Very, very little problem with chromatic aberration. There's some strange little features about this telescope that are quite unusual. Uh, first thing you can notice is the configuration of this mount. Look at how it's kind of uh, sticking out there, hanging out like it's uh, sort of balanced uh, on a precipice. And that's uh, deliberate. They did that because they're using a very interesting mechanism here. They have actually springs inside here to load up uh, the, the latitude. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. Maybe you can tell. <laughs> yep, needs shock absorbers apparently. <laughs> anyway, it's isn't that fun? I think it's the only telescope I've ever seen with that kind of a system. Uh, and it seems to work pretty well. <laughs> it's not bad at all. It does the job. So, uh, and I'll show you. I'll show you the innards of that thing here in a minute if I can. It's also got an interesting way of mounting the uh, system for the solar projection. Wait until you see that. Let me put this thing through its paces a little bit so you can see how it maneuvers. One thing about this scope, this counterweight is more than adequate. The scope is pretty light and I believe they use this mount with heavier scopes like maybe 80 or maybe even 90 millimeter scopes. That's much too heavy down there. So you got more than enough counterweight with it way up here. It's plenty. It's got plenty of counterweight. Okay, let me show you some more interesting features about this. Uh, it's got a locking mechanism over here so you can rotate this as necessary. It's also, I think you can see right here, it's got a, this is the locking mechanism for setting the latitude. And uh, maybe you can see the springs in there. I'm hoping you'll be able to see the springs stretching out and compressing. Yeah, you can go all the way down to just about, uh, you're not going to go all the way up to, to that height. But, um, and this thing has a sort of a, a nice locking mechanism there. It's not the kind of thing that you would think would work really well, but it does. It works just fine. No problem. No hassles. Really nice. Let me show you how the solar projection outfit works. Uh, first of all, you've only got one option for this. This There's a, a permanent part of the casting here that's threaded. It's the only place you're going to put this, which is fine. Here's the little screen. And this is going to come down like so. So you're going to project an image of the sun right down here. And uh, rotate it to give you a little better look at it. Something like that. Um, and it works just fine. Take a look at this complicated little system. This is all just for polar alignment. That's got a deal there. This is for focus. Offset there. In order to polar align this scope, first of all, you're going to Aim it north pretty pretty close as best you can. Lock it down and so forth. You're going to have to look through the little polar alignment scope here. And then here's an interesting trick. This has got a cover. There's a little tiny, I don't know how big it is. Maybe a 10 millimeter objective. It's tiny. 20 millimeters at most. 
So there's an objective inside there, but you, there's a, <laughs> the counterweight shaft actually goes through here and the counterweight shaft is cross drilled so that if you move it into the right position, like so, this has to be, um, you maybe can't tell, but the scope is at sort of 90 degrees to the pole. And now there, you can see through the hole here. There's a hole right through there. So now you can, you can find the pole star. Make sure you have the controls work. Right ascension. This thing is smooth, just smooth as butter. Here's the declination. Uh, the declination here has a full gear inside there, so you never have to worry about resetting any tangent arm or anything. It's it's all right there, and of course the same with the right ascension. It's a beautiful. Uh, the operation of this telescope is beautiful. The mount is just wonderful. Very, very nice. Comparable to Zeiss or Takahashi. Here we have the Pentax 65 next to its big brother, Pentax 85. This telescope was made in 1976. So it's uh, about six years older than this one. <clears throat> but you can see a clear family resemblance here. Now we've got the Pentax 65 next to the Pentax J60. The Pentax J60 I think was an attempt by Pentax to kind of uh, maybe slightly reduce the quality of the telescope uh, and market something at a, a more attractive price range back in the mid 80s. Uh, I think they were having some difficulty because these things were not cheap. So uh, I think this is still a real high premium quality near Takahashi. This one is a little bit less in quality, still a very, very good scope, especially compared to other 60 millimeter scopes of the era. The mount on this thing is superb. This is a great Altaz mount. Oh my goodness. Uh, very seldom did you see 60 millimeter scopes with this beefy and effective of a mount. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Pentax 65 from 1982. Thank you very much for watching.